All right, so I wanted to go ahead and go over some of the coordinate notations of the transformations again. Um, some of these we haven't really looked at too much, but they're not that hard if you just think about what's happening to the numbers. So let's look at this first example I've got up here. This is XY. Everything starts out with the regular old just XY. And this just arrow just means XY will map to X plus 3 and Y minus 2. So we've got to think about what happens here. So whatever numbers we have in our point makes it really simple. We just add 3 to the X right here, and then we'll take 2 from our Y. We need to think about what kind of transformation this is. So if we add 3 to our X, if we add 3 to our X, then we're going to have a movement along our X axis. So X goes left to right. Remember, if we add 3 to the X, that means we're going right 3. Okay? If we were subtracting, then we'd go left. So remember, X is left to right. Y is up and down. So in this case, and then the Y being Y minus 2 there would be down 2. So this would be a transformation. Didn't mean to make that mark. This would be a transformation of right 3 down 2. And that's a translation. That's something we should know. Right 3 down 2 is just a simple translation. All right. Then, the next one. Now the only thing that's happening, we're multiplying the x by 2, because that's 2x, and we're multiplying the y by 2, and you get 2y. So the transformation that we use for multipl uh, multiplication would be a dilation. And this would be a factor of 2, because we're multiplying by 2. Factor of Two. Okay, y'all should recognize this. This is one of our rotations. You have all of these written down, or at least you should. And this particular one would be a rotation. Well, that's my laser pointer. A rotation 90 degrees counterclockwise. So CCW. The next problem, and I didn't write the rest of these down because I know you've already got them somewhere. The next one. Now, the only thing we're doing is we're changing the sign of the Y. So we'll go from Y to negative Y. It's going to be a reflection over the X axis. Then the one below it is very similar, only now you're only changing the sign of the X. Up here, you change the sign of the Y. This is when you change the sign of the X. So it's going to be a reflection over the Y axis. And as long as you can understand what each of these are, what they look like, the math of it is not really that hard to follow. Um, we'll do a practice point with all these real quick, and you'll be able to see what's happening, what the actual mapping looks like. Then again, I didn't add all the rotations in there because I know you already have them written down and you don't need them. Okay, so let's do some examples real quick. We're gonna use a practice point of negative three, seven, and we're gonna do that for all of these. And I accidentally erased a little bit right here for my dilation, but it's okay. I fixed it. Uh, all right, so the very first one we have, we're gonna add three to the X and subtract two from the Y. So using our negative 3, 7, if we add 3 to negative 3, we get 0. And then if we subtract 2 from the 7, we get 5. So that's if we were to take that point and stick it through this transformation of a translation right 3 and down 2, the resulting point would be a 0, 5. All right, on the dilation, we just multiply both by 2. So we're going to use the negative 3, 7 again. We're going to have negative 6 and positive 14. That's just taking this point and multiplying the x by 2 and multiplying the y by 2. It's the only thing that's happening there. Now on our rotation, we're going to go ahead and we're going to switch the 
X and Y, so I'll have a seven here. I'm gonna change the sign there because I have that negative with my Y. So my original Y went to the X spot and changed the sign. And now my original X will go to the Y position and it does not change its sign. So that negative three will just drop straight down in here and we'll have negative three for our Y. That would be our new point. On the next one, we got a reflection over the X axis. All right, so the only thing that happens here, we're gonna change the sign of the Y, we'll have negative three and negative seven. We change the sign of our Y value. Again, we're always using this point for each one of these transformations. So this one goes right there. I know it's kind of getting to where I'm writing bigger than I need to, but we only got one more left anyway. But this transformation, we flipped over the X axis so it's just a reflection over the x-axis, so it means we change the sign of the y value. This time we're going to go ahead and reflect over the y or the yeah, reflect over the y-axis, and we're going to change the sign of our x now and make it a positive three. And of course, we keep our positive seven. All right, so quick rundown of all these points again. This was a translation, right three units down two units. So that means we added three to our X and we subtracted two from the Y. So our original point was negative three. For the X, we added three, made it zero. Seven for our Y, we subtracted two to make it five. We had our dilation next. We multiplied each by two. Negative three times two gave us negative six. Seven times two gave us 14. The next transformation, we had a rotation 90 degrees counterclockwise. We switched the X and Y around and we changed the sign of the original Y. So we switched in place, we brought seven in where the X would be instead of the Y and we changed the sign of it, made it a negative seven. And then our negative three just simply switched places with our Y and, made, and just stayed negative three. We didn't change the sign there. And that's what we see with this right here. It's telling us exactly what to do. Uh, right here, we're gonna reflect over the X axis. So we change the sign of our Y value is all we do. So negative three, positive seven now becomes negative three, negative seven. And then our last one, we had a reflection over the Y axis. And this time we changed the sign of our X went from negative three to positive three. And then we kept our seven the same because nothing happens with our Y. All of these, if you can see what's happening, you can do the math part of it. Only thing you have to do is really, if you're having trouble following, you could write below and just plug in your X and Y value and then just follow the rules. So let's say for this last one here, let's say we're gonna do two, five, so I know my X is two and Y is five. I just plugged it in there. All right, so then now I'll have negative two, positive five, and that's just based on me plugging a two in everywhere I see a X and a five everywhere I see a Y. It's very simple, that's all you're doing on these.